Hey friends, welcome to engineering tutorial. Today we are going to study about atomic structure of semiconductor materials. So uh, let's get started. First of all, we are going to uh, discuss about Bohr's atomic model or Bohr's atomic theory and we are going to use this theory to study about the atomic behavior atomic structure of semiconductor materials now the Bohr's atomic model was uh, proposed by a Danish physicist uh, Niels Bohr in 1913 and uh, it actually gives a clear-cut explanation of the atomic structure of uh, various materials all the materials atomic structure of every material so the postulates of Bohr's atomic theory are the first postulate is that an atom consists of a positively charged central core now this positively charged central core is called as nucleus as you all know now the negatively charged entities called as electrons revolve around this positively charged central nucleus in circular pathways now these circular pathways are called as orbits so this is the first postulate and the second postulate is that the electrons revolve around the nucleus at a fixed distance away from it there is a fixed distance between the nucleus and the revolving electrons so what it actually means that only certain designated orbits are allotted to the electrons revolving around the nucleus or orbits of fixed radius are allowed and the number of electrons in each orbit is also fixed so this is the second postulate now the third postulate is that the electrons in an orbit or revolving around the nucleus in a particular orbit have a fixed amount of energy carry a fixed amount of energy this energy is uh, directly proportional to the distance or the radius of the orbit or the distance between the nucleus and the revolving electron so it is directly proportional so more the distance between the nucleus and the revolving electron the larger is the energy or the greater is the orbit the greater is the energy associated with it now the next postulates are now if an electron which is revolving around the nucleus in its designated orbit is uh, fed with some extra energy or additional energy is given to it in the form of heat light or any other form of energy then it moves to a higher orbit after acquiring the energy now this process of giving external energy to a revolving electron so that it can move to a higher orbit is called as excitation this process is called as excitation but these elevated or excited electrons do not remain in that state for a long period of time after a certain period they lose the acquired energy through emission and drop down to their original energy state so they do not remain in that state forever they drop down to their original state and this is accompanied by the release of the same amount of energy which was fed to them before so <clears throat> next are the first second and third orbits uh, th uh, which uh, 
act as a circular pathways for electrons to revolve around the nucleus are called as K, L and M orbits respectively. So this uh, atomic model is similar to our solar system. The same way as uh, the planets, the nine planets, sorry, the eight planets which revolve around the sun, the same way the electrons revolve around the nucleus and also as uh, artificial satellites revolve around the earth, the same way the electrons revolve around the positively charged nucleus with the combination of centrifugal and centripetal force. So next we are going to discuss about the electronic configuration of silicon. So as we are discussing semiconductor materials, the atomic structure of semiconductor materials, so we have considered silicon in this case as it is one of the widely used semiconductor materials. So we all know has, that silicon has an atomic number of 14. It has 14 electrons in it. Now the electronic configuration of silicon is 2, 8 and 4. It means that it has three orbits, two electrons revolve in the first orbit, eight electrons revolve in the second orbit and four electrons revolve in the fourth orbit. So as we all know the last orbit or the uh, m orbit is the valence orbit or the outer orbit. It has four electrons. So this is the electronic configuration of silicon. This is the positively charged core, central part called as nucleus. These are the circular pathways called as orbits and these are the revolving electrons, the red circles. The, so, so as I said, two electrons in the first, eight electrons in the second and four electrons in the third. So, this is the electronic configuration of silicon. Now, next we are going to discuss about the energy levels in semiconductor materials. Now, as uh, uh, postulated in Bohr's atomic theory, the electrons revolving around the nucleus in their designated orbits carry certain amount of energy with them or have certain amount of energy with them by the virtue of uh, the distance uh, away from the nucleus. So these energies which are associated with uh, the electrons revolving around the nucleus are called as energy levels. Now these energy levels or the energy associated with each electron revolving around the nucleus in a circular orbit can be conveniently represented using the energy level diagrams. So let's see an energy level diagram. Now let's uh, first see this, uh, the distance between the nucleus and the first, second and third orbit which is represented by the radius R1, R2 and R3. As we all know, the energy possessed by the electrons revolving around the nucleus in a particular orbit is directly proportional to the radius of the orbit. So it is that. Now the energy level diagram of semiconductors. So as I said, the electrons revolving around the nucleus have a certain energy associated with them which is called as energy level. So these are the energy levels associated with electrons revolving around the first orbit, second orbit and third orbit respectively. Now you would notice here that the first orbit energy level is minimum. The second level lies in between and the third le energy level or the energy level of the valence band or the valence orbit is maximum. So here it is the energy or the energy associated with electrons revolving around the nucleus is directly proportional to the distance between the nucleus and 
the electrons or the radius of the orbit. That is why the third orbit or the outer orbit has maximum energy level. Now, I will, I, uh, I will tell you that this energy level diagram is only applicable to an isolated atom or an independent atom which is not interacted by other neighboring atoms. It does not experience any sort of interaction from other atoms. That is why it uh, possesses single definite energy level that which are represented with these line diagrams, this line which means that it can only possess a single definite energy but it is not, uh, it does not happen in practically. It is because the semiconductor materials have atoms closely packed with each other. It contains millions of atoms. So, they are continuously under the interaction from other neighboring atoms. An atom is continuously interacted with uh, other neighboring atoms. So, what happens is that the electrons revolving around the nucleus in a particular or single atom is continuously, uh, <clears throat> uh, continuously under the interaction from the electrons or the, uh, uh, the bands or the orbits, electronic uh, bands of other atoms. So, the electrons of other atoms also interact with uh, each other. So, this is actually the practical energy band diagram of semiconductors. So, due to the interaction between atoms, the energy which is possessed by electrons in various orbits have two levels, the minimum level and maximum level. This is for orbit 1. For orbit 2, the minimum level is here, the maximum level is here. For orbit 3, the minimum level is here, the maximum level is here. So, at any point of time, the electrons in a particular orbit can have an energy lying in between these two points. So, these are the possibilities of the energy, the range of energies that can be possessed by an electron in a particular orbit revolving around the nucleus. So, this is the energy band diagram of uh, ideal uh, sorry, the practical semiconductor atoms which are continuously under the interaction with other neighboring semiconductor atoms in the solid semiconductor material. So, important energy bands in semiconductors. Valence band. Now, valence band is the range of energies that can be possessed by the electrons in the outermost orbit of the semiconductor atom or the mth m orbit. Now, as we know the electrons in the outermost orbit have maximum energy. So, the valence band has the highest energy in the semiconductor atom. Then comes conduction band. Now, it is uh, seen that some of the electrons in the valence band are loosely attached with the nucleus and when some amount of energy is given to them, they detach from the outer orbit and become free and independent. Now, these are the electrons which are responsible for electrical conduction for the flow of current in the semiconductor. So, these electrons are called as free electrons or conducting electrons. Now, the energy or the range of energies possessed by these free independent and conducting electrons are called as the conduction band. Now, next is the forbidden energy gap. Now, what is the forbidden energy gap? It is actually the energy difference or the energy separation between the valence band electrons and the conduction band electrons. So, actually 
this is the amount of energy that has to be fed or given to the valence band electrons so that they can gain sufficient energy to become free and independent or to convert them into conducting electrons so in simple words it is the amount of energy required to convert valence band electrons into free and conducting electrons now next we are going to discuss about the representation of forbidden energy gap so as you see here this is the valence band or the and a range of energies possessed by electrons in the m orbit or the valence orbit now these are the range of energies which are possessed by the free and conducting electrons which is the conduction band now the energy separation between these two bands is called as the forbidden energy gap or the energy which has to be given to the valence band so that the electrons can become free and go to the conduction band now this energy gap is about 0.7 electron volt for germanium and 1.1 electron volt with silicon now don't confuse this with uh, the barrier potential or the built in potential in the pn junction that is something that is entirely different this is different so don't confuse it with that so this is the forbidden energy gap for germanium semiconductor this forbidden energy gap is 0.7 electron volt and for silicon which is 1.1 electron volt so it means that 0.7 electron volt has to be given to germanium semiconductor to the valence band electrons so that they can escape and become free and conducting electrons and uh, in case of silicon it is 1.1 electron volt next we are going to discuss about the energy bands in conductors and insulators now this is the energy band diagram of conductors so as you see here it's an interesting thing both the conduction band and valence band are overlapping over each other which means that the forbidden energy gap is negligible there is no energy gap or energy separation between the valence band and the conduction band and both are filled with conducting electrons that's why conductors have high electrical conductivity and with the application of a small amount of potential they uh, have electrical or current conduction now in case of insulators there is the see the energy separation between the valence band and the conduction band 15 electron volt 15 electron volt as compared to 0.7 and 1.1 electron volt in case of semiconductors it may look 15 to you but it's actually a high amount of energy so that's why insulators have very negligible current conduction capacity or electrical conduction as the energy gap separation is very high so here i have discussed with you about uh, the atomic structure of semiconductors uh, we have discussed about the postulates of bohr's atomic theory then the electronic configuration of silicon atom then about the various energy band or energy level diagrams of semiconductors valence band conduction band and forbidden energy gap and also about the energy bands in uh, semiconductors conductors and insulators so i hope you like this video and please do subscribe my channel engineering tutorial for more such videos on electronics engineering uh thank you very much and have a